let me make sure I got all my stuff very good all right so another art lesson today uh, today we're gonna be doing trees um, got a lot of inspiration just right out here in the yard lots of trees so uh, we will have a lot of um, a lot of opportunity to observe as well as um, I'll show you guys some little tricks you can do for um, um, like make-believe fancy trees you know that kind of stuff uh, cartoon style trees I'll show you a couple tricks for that as well um, so if you got your pen and paper we're gonna get started here in just a second um, I posted uh, a little while ago a list of all the um, um, classes that we're gonna be or lessons I'll be doing coming up I'm gonna do uh, outdoor sculpture tomorrow which will be fun so um, uh, if, if you're if you show up for that one that'll be pretty interesting we're gonna do I'm gonna do some um, gather some sticks and stuff and I'm gonna show you guys some um, different styles of uh, little outdoor installations you can do and then uh, next week too I think Tuesday it's supposed to be cloudy maybe rain so we'll do some acrylic painting so if you have acrylic paints or um, some water-based paints you can follow along with us on that as well um, but so, uh, so today, trees. Let me get back over here to my paper. All right. Paper and pencil, like we've been using. There's the paper. Very nice. Got a selection of pencils. Got my handy dandy pencil sharpener, too. So these are pretty nice. Um, if you need to get a pencil sharpener, you can just take that blade out, replace it. Uh, Good pencil sharpener to have. Drawing trees in the winter time is is easy, so because um, you have all these trees that I'm looking at out here. So I'm gonna and today what I'm gonna do for the lesson I'm gonna divide up my my paper here into some boxes. So then I'm gonna draw specifically in each box. So so for this first box here. Um, it's just a couple trees. I'm going to do some sketches of some trees I'm looking at right now here out over the porch. There's this wild rose bush that's kind of down here. There's this one tree. It has this weird crook in it, like, like something hit it. There's a couple limbs coming off. So when you draw your, your limbs, it's really easy. You just right off the side there uh, little tree doesn't have to be thick a couple little limbs another little tree right here so it's one little line and then a couple extra lines for some branches you can do some finer lines if you like to make little fine branches that's okay as well and then over here there's a group of trees. There's one that comes up and a big branch off of it. Um, another one that goes this way. And then and one, one over here. And then behind these all, there's a holly bush. So. And the holly bush is right here. There we go. Some more trees back here in the distance. Just like that. And then, um, depending on if you're looking outside or if you're making it up, let's say there's a mountain ridge that comes down through here. So you be careful. You don't want it to slice through your trees. You want your trees to, to look like trees. And some more off in the distance that way. Just like that. And then as you go up here, top of your box, you can put more little branches. All right. Um, another thing from observation. If you notice that trees, when they fork or split, there'll be a main part that keeps going up. A shadow on this side. Tree limb, a little bit of shadow in the fork there, and then it goes up. And then some other little branches off of that, too. 
So let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit better. There we go. You can do trees just back and forth without ever taking your pencil off the paper. Fill them in and then it kind of looks like bark as you do that. And then also um, these other little trees. I like to do little trees just with one quick line. And then a couple other little lines and then you just come through like that. So just like that. Really easy. All right, so these are easy because they're trees in winter, but in the summertime, let's say you want to draw some trees that um, uh, have foliage on them and stuff. So the easy way to do that, um, and this is a trick I learned in drafting, because when you draw trees on, for a house plan on the elevation, you don't really draw all the parts of the tree. So you've got a trunk, and then here's going to be the top. And it's going to come around the bottom, the back, just like that. And then we'll draw a little, little tufts here and there. Kind of fill it in like this. A couple of branches. And you can get a, you know, your eye tells you when you view this, it tells you it's a tree. Whoever's looking at it will go, oh, that's a tree. So you can get away with kind of leaving a lot of the information out and just filling it in. Like this big puff ball. Um, it's a trick for model railroading too. If any of you out there are train buffs, um, fiber fill puff balls. <laughs> That's another video though. All right, so a couple of more trees. I'll show a couple of groups of trees back here. Remember, the trees that are further in the distance would be behind this tree. So make sure you have them overlap. It creates that sense of distance, sense of space in your drawings. And then uh, a little bit of a little bit of some ground. We'll come through and flatten this out like that. Just a couple of little marks to kind of show different little elevations in the ground. You can build them up on this tree here. If you were, if you wanted to do a shadow, you could come in and fill it in darker for the shadow of the tree. Uh, but don't forget though, trees filter in a little lot of. Uh, light come in so you'll get this dappled effect on the ground so it's okay when you do your shading if you leave a lot of white spots that's all right makes it look very uh, very natural just like that all right and then so another little thing I like to do um, bushes and, and whatnot just you know again we're just drawing these little clumps like this and then you know a tree will come up out of that kind of like it is here and maybe some more just like that just and, and just a bunch of squiggly lines but once you get in and start shading this and filling it filling it in it'll have some real texture to it all right Again, another tree back behind this. There we go. Okay. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to show you some tree trunks. Um, some big trees. What I like to call fancy trees. But do um, so you have your roots that will come out? Your trunk will come up this way. The other side of the trunk over here, another root. And then you'll have this one that you don't really see the root coming towards you, but it gets like the knot. And then, of course, another, maybe another one over here, too. And when you do trees like this, it's come in a little shading, more lines. But you could do these fantasy trees like this. Um, have a dead part, and it goes on up. Not whole, with an owl in it. That's a little owl hiding out here in the knot hole of the tree. So when you do a knot hole, I could come through with these, just these little marks like this around the edge. 
make it look like it was built up, like the branch came out and it snapped off. And some foliage. I'll do the foliage up top here. The rest of the tree goes on up. mountains off in the distance. Some bushes and some other stuff here. Really simple. Um, one of my favorite ones to do is so you get the like the Dr. Zeus style trees. So you just come through. But don't forget it has a, a base so like when we were talking about drawing shapes. You want to kind of show that it's sitting in the ground even though it has this weird you know grass foliage thing at the bottom. There we go. Be a good way to uh, start a palm tree, maybe. <laughs> All right. Some other things, too, if you want to get in close to your trees. Um, some great tips for drawing leaves. Don't forget that leaves are veined, very much like the branches. And it's always fun at the end of your leaf to kind of widen it out a little bit. When you're drawing leaves on a little tree, let's say we got our little tree right here. We'll go ahead and fill it out pretty, pretty good with some limbs and stuff. But you want to show bunches of little leaves. You just come through with a bunch of little marks. You don't have to go through and and draw each. No, you don't have to draw each leaf. That's you just put a bunch of little marks, fill it in. Just a bunch of little squiggles and circles and spirals. You can even put them out away from the branches. Where, um, where maybe the branches, the limbs are a little too small for us to actually see from the distance, but you make little decorative trees like this. So again, to remind everybody for your pencil selection, I really enjoy using all the B pencils that start at HB and go up. Um, I typically like to draw with a 4B, 5B, uh, even a 6B, which is what I'm using today. Uh, you can use the H pencils, which are harder, but they make a finer, lighter line. Um, I would use, I would save those um, if you wanted to draw like on a piece of paper before you painted on it with watercolor or tempera or gouache. So you have a lot of fun doing this. You can sit here and just fill this in with these little circles. This could take some time. This could be very, very relaxing and meditative, if you will. And don't forget when you, when you get towards uh, the finished end of your drawing, always put a little shading in your tree. Come back in. If you have some branches that are floating like that one was, make sure you connect them in. Fill it out. Add a few other branches. If you want to, you can also come through and do a little around the edge in a couple spots. You don't want to fill it in completely because then it'll look like um, a piece of cotton candy or, or uh, broccoli or something. And uh, when you do your trunk of the tree, don't forget the tree does spread out. Not as, uh, not as dramatic as this, but the roots do spread out and come out a little bit. So, And you can use your shading to... Um, show some variation in the trunk. I've got one tree in my yard that um, up through the middle is completely 
gone. And so it's at the base, it's down, the trunk looks like this. This is all rotten in the middle, and this is all good bark on either side. And it just goes straight up, about 20 feet, just like that. All of this rotted out, and all this is good. A couple of the leaves off of it. <laughs> there we go. We'll shade that rotted part in the middle out. And uh, another little quick trick while you're drawing. So back to this guy for just a second. Uh, great trick for drawing a rock. A little, just a quick line like that. A little bit of shading along this, this side right here. And some grass. And there you go. You can go through here and put stones all day long. Just little round rocks and some grass. So I'll show you that. So on this one, there is a rock. That is right behind this one. And it's a funky shape. It looks like like a seat. And it's because there's moss here. And the rock face like this. So it looks like a little like a little chair. And it's over in the side. And then there's some some other little trees and stuff growing up behind it. Alright. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to post those in the comments. Um, again, I'm always taking requests. Um, if you guys want to do some more of this, uh, some folks I would recommend. Um, of course, uh, Bob Ross is the master of making trees, quick brush strokes and stuff to make little trees, uh, happy trees at that. So um, if you want to look at some of his work, uh, he has really good trees. And then um, another person to look at if you're interested in old uh, older art, um, Albert Durer, uh, who's a painter, uh, drawer, etcher from uh, Germany. He, he has some fabulous etchings and drawings of trees. So make sure you look up um, Albert Durer. You can look up Bob Ross. So... This would be great resources. So, but again, post your drawings in the comments. Love to see your work, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow outside in the woods. So, have a great day. Stay safe.